Welcome in to a special edition of Rebound Off the Net inside the Nashville Cats as we preview the Cats 2024 season. I'm your host, Joshua Cox. The Cats are a restart franchise who played in the original AFL from 1997 to 2001 and then again from 2005 to 2007 before folding. The Cats will compete this year in the East Division, which includes the Albany Firebirds, Minnesota Myth, and Philadelphia Soul. Off the field, they have a front office bolstered by legendary Titans coach Jeff Fisher and national media icon Greg Pogue. Their play-by-play guy will be the legendary voice, Eli Gold. On the football field, they'll be led by former Arena Cup champion head coach Dean Kikinos. The Cats are quickly turning into what many people have deemed the model franchise. Shortly, we'll be joined by associate head coach Adam Shackelford, who will help us preview the Cats' season. But first, let's introduce you to the rest of the coaching staff. First, as we said, the Cats will be led by a longtime AFL coach and Arena Cup champion Dean Kikinos, who has more than 30 years of coaching experience. He was offense coordinator from the Cats from 2005 to 2007, and also during that time served as a pro scout for the Tennessee Titans. He won an Arena Cup championship in the AF2 with the Tennessee Valley Vipers in 2008 and went on to coach the Georgia Force, New Orleans Voodoo, Tampa Bay Storm, and Washington Valor. His defensive coordinator for the Cats will be Costi Mateo. He started his career as a player for the Chattanooga Mocs, where he's a Hall of Famer. He is a former player in the AFL, playing for the Nashville Cats and Arizona Rattlers. He also played in NFL Europe. He co- also coached in the CFL and has coached with Dean Kikinos in the AFL previously. At wide receivers, coach for the Cats will be C.J. Johnson. Coach Johnson is a former AFL player with the Cats and also played for the Chicago Rush and Georgia Force. He's currently a local high school coach in the Nashville area. The special teams coordinator for the Cats will be Kim Kosse. He is a former NFL Europe player. He was coached a lot of different places. Uh, he coached in the G- German Football League and in the college ranks. He also coached with Coach Dean Kikinos with the New Orleans Voodoo. The defensive line coach and director of community relations will be Wes Stevens. He's a former AFL player who played for the Cats in 2005. The defensive backs coach will be uh, Nick Johnson. He will also serve as a special assistant to head coach Dean Kikinos. He played in the NFL with the St. Louis Rams and also played in the AFL with the San Jose Sabercats. Last, last assistant line coach will be Lance Sino. He's a former NFL coach and was in the AFL coach in L.A. He's a current director of player development at Tennessee State University in the Nashville area. And now, to help us preview the Cats' season is associate head coach Adam Shackelford. He is, he's a highly successful head coach in the AFL and IFL in Spokane and Tri-Cities, including winning an Arena Cup championship with the Spokane Shock. He's a former director of player personnel with several IFL teams. He holds an overall coaching record of 151-49 and 49 as a head coach. He now joins us. Coach, welcome in. How's it going? Things are good. We're just uh, tightening some things up and getting ready for this season. Absolutely. Uh, coach, uh, when we're recording this, the NFL Network deal was announced this morning. There's going to be seven Cats games on the NFL Network. What does that mean to the franchise to be put on the national stage? Well, you know, we had heard that this was a possibility and, and for our commissioner to go out and get this done and for our league to get this done, I think, you know, makes an impact and a statement. You know, I think uh, it's exciting for our players. It's exciting for our organization. Uh, you know, in Nashville, Coach Fisher and our ownership have, have really uh, tried to make sure that uh, – that we are at the highest level that we can be. And I think, uh, I think this TV deal reflects that. Coach, give us your thoughts on the league, how that's shaped out and how do you feel as we enter year one in the AFL? Well, you know, I kind of got a late start uh, coming on with coach Coquino. who I've known for, for over 20 years, we've competed against each other and, and uh, I have a lot of respect for him, which is one of the reasons I basically came out of retirement to, to get back into coaching uh, with coach. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to focus on the league as a whole. We've been focused on the Nashville Cats and what we have to do, prepare to put the best product on the field we can. Uh, But from what I'm seeing, uh, especially recently, I think it's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Uh, Starting a league uh, basically from scratch, I can't imagine is an easy process. Uh, I went through that in the IFL uh, in 2010 as a head coach there when they were starting off the process. So, um, I do have some experience as far as uh, being involved in, in, in these kind of things. And, and I think it's off to a great start. I, I think things are getting organized and put in order uh, before the season starts. And some of the things that we're doing are pretty exciting. 
absolutely. Let's look at your division in particular. You've got a really tough division in the East Division, made up of the Albany Firebirds, Philly Soul, and the Minnesota Myth. Where do you see yourself at in the division? What's your thoughts on the division? Well, I think it's a tough division, number one. I think you're right. I, I think, you know, uh, as the director of scouting as well, you know, part of my job is to evaluate rosters and evaluate players. And, and I see who these teams in our division are signing, and, and they're they're all signing very good players. Uh, when I'm recruiting, uh, I find myself recruiting against the teams in our division, uh, maybe more than some other divisions. So, and, and that has to do with location and area uh, as well. But uh, I think uh, all the coaches in our division have done a great job of putting a roster together. And I think uh, it's going to make for, for great TV on NFL Network. You talked about recruiting there a minute ago. We'll get into specific players here in just a minute. But tell us a little bit about the process, what it's been like putting the roster together, and how do you evaluate players? Yeah, you know, when we build this, you know, started to build this team, uh, we, we focused on local first. Um, you know, we wanted to emphasize that uh, in the city uh, of Nashville, in the state of Tennessee, and in, the, in our region, uh, there are good players you know, kind of a local homegrown feel. If we could find those players, we were going to go out and get them. From there, you know, we spread out to the regional uh, areas. Uh, obviously, we're an SEC country, and and, um, and and that certainly helps as well. Uh, we want the community support, and the community uh, likes guys that are local. So that's been a focus. Uh, and then we've found guys from all over the country, uh, quite honestly, outside of that. And uh, we're going to try to find the best highest character, best football players we can uh, to represent that Nashville Cats brand. When you get to camp, you're obviously going to have to cut the roster down to 24 total and then 21 on the active roster. What might make the difference between a guy that gets cut versus someone that makes the team for you all? Well, you know, we, we bring in – every team is going to bring in the most talented guys they can. Uh, you know, I, I think it comes down to – you know, and this might be a little bit of coaches speak, but it comes down to the little things, you know, uh, the attention to detail, uh, the the mental side of things, you know, um, doing the right things on and off the field. And, and when you have competition in camp, uh, you know, this is my 30th season uh, of, of coaching football. And uh, there's a lot of things and valuable uh, – attributes that guys can bring to the field other than their talent and i think this camp is a great time for those guys to show that and you just you're not always right but you just try to pick the right 24 to to get in that locker room and lead your team absolutely let's start out with the quarterback position coach uh you have ifl rookie of the year Mo atkins you have charlie brewer who played at baylor and liberty uh what's that quarterback position looking like is there a leader in the clubhouse who's going to be the one that wins the job well, it, you know, winning the job in Nashville is going to be guys coming in and competing. You know, Coach Kokinos is going to uh, work with our quarterbacks, and he's going to um, he's going to decide those kind of things. But I think, you know, we also have Cooper Callis, uh, a kid that we really like, a Division Two kid. So, you know, the three quarterbacks we have right now under contract, you know, Ramon has uh, indoor. Um, experience he was our first target when we got this job he's a guy that we really like uh he's a guy that uh, stands tall in the pocket very athletic also throws a great ball charlie brewer is a, an outstanding uh prospect uh big numbers in college um you know has a little bit of chip on his shoulder he, he feels like and we agree maybe he was missed uh, had some injuries that probably cost him some opportunities he's healthy now uh, and we like Cooper Callis a lot. He's a guy with a lot of athleticism, throws a great ball. Uh, you know, he was a finalist for Division II Player of the Year and uh, and comes highly recommended by a lot of people. I like our quarterbacks. I like the room and I like the battle. I think that we're gonna we're gonna watch throughout camp. Yeah, it's gonna be a great quarterback battle. Let's go to the football or the I'm sorry, the fullback and linebacker position. Uh, the AFL is a pass heavy game, but who are some of the guys that might get some carries in the backfield? How do you plan to use the fullback position? And then if you could flip it over to the linebacker position of those who's gonna play both ways. 
Yeah, you know, with, with the fullback, typically that guy – uh, in the past, you know, when I coached arena football before I was in the indoor football league, that guy was an athletic offensive lineman, uh, maybe a, a smaller, a little bit smaller defensive interior lineman. Uh, we've got a few of those guys that fit that fit that mold. Uh, sometimes you can get away with putting an athletic bigger linebacker in there as well. Uh, you know, it's kind of a matter of, of where you're at on the field sometimes and what, what you want to do in protection. You know, those guys are also eligible so uh they have to have the they have to have the ability to run the football i'm not sure they have to be great at it uh but they have to have the ability to do it their first job is to protect our quarterback this is a quarterback driven league uh so they have to be able to do that yeah, let's move on to the receiving core uh, you have maurice urban as your headliner he was a game breaker designation by the afl uh talk a little bit about him and kind of the rest of your receiving core who's going to be some of the big play guys for you all in the receiving core well you know we have we have a lot of young kids that are going to have to learn the game but uh, we do like marquis Irvin a lot uh, he's a guy that i targeted early uh i watched him play he has, a, he has indoor or inside the walls experience, which I think is crucial. Uh, and he's going to have some competition uh, as well. But I think he's a guy that gets downfield, catches the ball well, uh, has has very good speed, catches the ball at the highest point. Uh, he's a guy at the goal line that's going to be good for us, I believe, because he does have some height and, uh, and tends to come down with the ball. Uh, great blocker. Uh, he'll be good on our, in the screen game. Just does a lot of nice things for us. Okay, we'll move now to the offensive line, defensive line. Uh, most will play both ways. One of your headliners is a local college guy there in Nashville, Sage Young out of Vanderbilt. Uh, how's the line shaking out, and has there been challenges in recruiting the guys to play both ways? No, we've just kind of focused on finding the best players we can. Uh, we'll teach what we need to teach, and um, – you know, you obviously have to be able to protect your quarterback. Those guys are the ones that, that help you score the most points. And and we've got some guys in place to do that. We like our pass rush. Um, you know, into the season, we'll have a better idea of exactly, obviously, what we have. But uh, we've really focused on the big the big guys last uh, probably three to five weeks. And, and I feel like we've got a group on both sides of the ball that are not only versatile, uh, but can give us uh, hopefully an advantage throughout the, these games, especially early in the season. All right, let's move to the defensive back position. Uh, some of the receivers will flip over and play DB in the AFL. Uh, I know you all signed Trey Meadows, who's the IFL all-rookie team last year. Uh, talk to us about the defensive backfield. How's that shaping out? What are your expectations for that position? Well, again, we have some guys like Trey, uh, Derek Jones, uh, Ole Miss have played in Frisco last year and then North Football League guys that have played um, a significant amount of time uh, in the indoor football league or at least between the walls uh, and we have some guys uh, from the USFL and the XFL and and some guys right out of college we have a great mix we had signed Cordell Jackson who was defensive player of the year uh, in the IFL last year he's up in Canada right now with Edmonton uh, after he signed with us, he went up there, and we wish him uh, a lot of success. He's a nice young man. I had him in Frisco last year. Uh, so, you know, you look at you look at our defensive back, and I think there's a lot of ability there. You know, uh, we, we as coaches, I think uh, a scary word sometimes is that word potential because that, that potential has to become production at some point. But uh, I think we have some tools there to be very good. Uh, I know for sure we have an outstanding uh, defensive coordinator and Coach Cause and the defensive coaches uh, do an outstanding job and will do an outstanding job for us guys with a lot of experience that will get these guys on the same page very quickly. Last position, Coach, uh, how's your kicking situation looking? Well, we have a lot of guys on the list and uh, guys with experience. Um, you know, Coach Kokinos and I have coached a long time. Uh, both of us so you know we have guys that that uh we have targeted uh and we will narrow that down at some point and obviously coach kukinos will make the final decision on that 
uh, my job is to put guys on a list and coach's job is to pick who he wants. And, and, uh, I'm just blessed that he allows me some, some feedback on, on what we need to do. We have a great working relationship. And I think, you know, our kicking position come game one, game one in a perfect world, we have, um, uh, a guy with some experience. And I think in a perfect world, we have some young guys that are battling for that spot as well. As your roster stands right now, where do you feel your areas of strength and what are areas you're uncertain about as you go into camp? You know, that's a great question. I think when you're an expansion team, uh, which is not just us, it's everybody. You're an expansion league. Uh, I think you need the first two games maybe to figure that out. You know, have I been doing this long enough to maybe circle a, a position uh, that I feel good at? Uh, I, I maybe could, could circle a couple. I, I like our offensive line. Uh, I like um, you know, our ability to have several guys there that, that I think are very good. Uh, we're, we're honing in on a few more pass rush guys, I think, to secure our defensive line. Uh, our quarterback room is going to be very solid. Uh, and I think all of our positions are going to be competitive. And I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, we've got to be competitive in camp and, uh, and then we've got to make the right choices as coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who's maybe a player we don't know now as fans, uh, that we'll know at the end of the season. Well, I, you know, we've got a couple defensive linemen. Uh, Zay Henderson is a guy that, uh, from Texas A&M that, uh, was in the indoor football league last year, had a knee, um, had an injury kind of early uh, in the season that he is uh, he is ready to play. I think Zay is a guy that um, when you watch him play, he can take over a football game. Uh, another defense lineman, uh, Zeke Rose out of West Virginia. Uh, very dominant pass rush and, uh, and defensive lineman. I think those two uh, are going to be great. Vaughn Taylor out of uh, out of Moorhead State and, and start off at Kansas, played the USFL for the Pittsburgh Maulers. And, and I think he's a guy uh, on defensive line uh, that's very good. And then, you know, we like Marquise Irvin uh, and, uh, and some of our local guys as well. You know, we, we really have, if there's a guy in Nashville that can help us, we've done a good job, I think, of locating those guys and getting them out. And, and I think those guys are going to help us as well. Last question for you, Coach. Uh, this will be Aaron during training camp. Tell us a little bit about what camp will look like for you all. What are your plans for camp? Well, well we're going to we're going to kick off in early March uh, camp in early March, and and um, you know we're going to we're going to uh, not only work these guys on the field, but uh, you know I think the key to camp is is and what Coach Coquinos does so well is. Uh, we've got to find the right 24 guys and that's on the field and off the field. We need a close knit group who's willing to, to go to battle together and do the right things. Um, camp is going to be set up. Uh, we're going to, we're trying to be a model franchise here. So camp is set up. Everything is, is handled. We have a lot of people working. There's a lot of moving parts that, that I've been so impressed that our, our group there in Nashville, and I'm not there yet. I'm still out in Spokane. I won't be there until, the end of March, but there's so many moving parts that Coach Coquinos is heading up along with Coach Fisher uh, and our great ownership uh, and and so many moving parts to start this thing. And I've just been so impressed how they've handled everything, getting things done, getting things scheduled to make sure that not only will our fans and community have a great experience uh, come April 27th, but our players are well taken care of. Uh, as they work their way through camp and try to make this football team. Coach, we appreciate your time helping us break down the Cats today. Look forward to meeting you in person at the Municipal uh, in Nashville on the 27th. Thanks. I really appreciate it.